Watcher Fitsters. So today I am going to be sharing with you the three things that literally revolutionized my journey through the menopause and they made such a huge difference to me. They are super easy to implement, they cost absolutely nothing to do and I just wanted to share those with you because I have a lot of ladies that contact me about struggling with the menopause. There are so many symptoms from sort of hot flashes to brain fog to anxiety to sleeplessness to extra hair to lack of hair to joint pains you know you name it there are I think there's 60 odd different symptoms that we get so um, I just wanted to share the three top tips that I found have made such a big big difference to me in the hope that they're going to help you as well so uh, first and foremost a lot of it boils down to what we eat and that doesn't mean cutting out all the the treats and the bad stuff it just means taking you know in adding one beneficial thing to your day daily and removing one negative thing from your day daily because if you try and do it all overnight it's just going to be too much and it becomes overwhelming and it's easy to kind of forget what you wanted to do and it becomes just like too much so just implement one of these things um add more cruciferous vegetables into your diet they are really really good for us as we go through the menopause uh, try and eat more foods that contain phytoestrogens. Now, soy in particular is a food that has high levels of phytoestrogens. They help, when, as we go through the menopause and, and we're creating less estrogen, um, it's quite handy to have phytoestrogens from plants. Um, I know there's that whole soy debate out there, but I've been drinking soy milk for several years now. I drink organic soy milk. And um, I think it has been contributory to me actually managing to get through the menopause relatively unscathed. Um, it does help bump up the falling levels of estrogen in our bodies. It's not quite as effective as the estrogen that we make, but it's certainly worth experience, um, experimenting with, particularly if you suffer with things like hot flashes and things like joint pain that are specifically estrogen related. Um, but try and eat a wide range of colours as well. Most of us eat too many beige foods. Um, you want to be adding more blueberries, raspberries, the sort of the more bitter fruits into your diet. Eat things like aubergines or eggplants, depending on which part of the world you're in as to what you call them. Uh, but green leafy vegetables are particularly useful. They're very high in calcium. And of course, as we go through the menopause, our bone health also deteriorates. So um, we want to be making sure we've got a good combination of magnesium, which helps us to keep us calm, calcium and a wide range of vitamins. Also on that point, I want to make you aware of how important fat is. Healthy fats are just absolutely vital. Eat a wide range of nuts and seeds, um, avocados, things like that, which are going to help you get your healthy fats. They're not only healthy fats are not only really beneficial for our nervous system, but a lot of vitamins are fat soluble. So um, A, C, D, E, K off the top of my head. I may have got that wrong, so don't quote me, but just off the top of my head. And um, unless if you're not if you're eating those vitamins without fat. Um, your body can't synthesize them. So fat is incredibly important. People tend to think, oh no, fat free is the best way. It's not, you need healthy fats. What you need less of is sugar. And that sort of leads me on to the next point is reduce the amount of processed sugar that you're eating. Um, you will find that if you, do, if you follow like a food tracker or a food diary, when you eat something that's quite high in sugar, you will have a spike of a hot flash and it also can aggravate acne and joint pain because of the sugar makes us more inflammatory. Thank you for all the hearts, you guys. Um, and so just be aware of the amount of sugar. That's the one you want to be reducing and you want to be eating plenty of healthy fats and vegetables. And if you eat meat, make sure if you can afford organic meat, get organic meat. But also experiment with some vegan meals during the week. Plant-based whole food meals are incredibly good for us. Um, and it's quite nice to sort of vary your diet up. So a lot of us eat more protein than we need. Uh, that's another common myth out there. And, um, you know, plant-based proteins are incredibly beneficial for us. So change it up a little bit. Um, Google, there is you find so many healthy absolutely delicious vegan meals out there so experiment see how you get on with that but i'd certainly try and incorporate more vegetables into your diet that's one of the things that most of us eat too few of and um, make sure that you're sort of covering the wide range of the the rainbow 
The next one is exercise. Exercise is absolutely vital, particularly as we go through the menopause, because as our estrogen levels drop, we, it also has a knock-on effect to our bone health, specifically because uh, we create less osteoblasts, which are the cells which help us bone build bone, and we have more osteoclasts, which are the bones which gobble up bone. And you know, some people don't realize that bone is actually a living tissue. So we need to be eating and, and living a lifestyle that's going to be beneficial for our bones. And as we go through the menopause, we need a real, we need a good combination of cardio health, high interval training, and also strength training. Because as the muscles, you know, as you're using your muscles, you're pulling on the bones, and that actually helps to improve the density of your bone. But because you'll have stronger muscles too, you'll have better balance, you'll have better coordination, you should stretch too, so you'll have better flexibility. Um, so from a biological point of view, exercise is incredibly important when you are going through the menopause and, and on into um into middle age and beyond because you know, if you don't use it you will lose it muscles will atrophy so it's really important that you're doing regular regular strength training three four five times a week um, actually if you want to get access to some of the workouts that I do if you click the uh, link tree link in my bio on my Instagram account um, there's a there's a little page there where you can get complete 14 days complete access to every single workout program that I have access to you also get a lot of nutritional information you get access to a lot more than just the workout so take a look at that and then if you want to get that you can easily you know give it a try give it a spin it'll give you some really good ideas of workouts that you can use that are going to be specifically beneficial for you during the menopause the other thing with exercise is it helps us deal with stress so if you're becoming more anxious and stressful during the menopause I know a lot of people struggle with anxiety it can suddenly flare up out of nowhere you wake up in the morning and you feel like this impending sense of doom I've been there I've had that as well and you can't explain it at all there's no real reason you just have that horrible feeling um hey Lucy lovely to see you um then it's just one of the you know exercise is going to help you gobble up those stress hormones but it also promotes the release of feel-good hormones so you get your kick of endorphins as well and you'll find that cardio specifically is really good at gobbling up stress hormones and giving you those feel-good hormones strength training is really good for your joints and for your bones um, and will give you that body confidence too because you'll be able to you'll have better posture you'll carry yourself better and you know as you build lean muscle um, you'll be burning up more calories too so if weight is an issue for you um, you know if you've got more muscular tissue your metabolism in increases and uh, you will be gobbling up calories throughout the course of the day so that's another added bonus as many of us struggle with belly fat now just quickly on belly fat um, stress causes us to hang on to belly fat because the fat around our bellies have four times the amount of receptors for cortisol which is one of our stress hormones so when you are feeling stressed that's why you get pudgy around the middle so you know try and incorporate techniques that are going to help you with stress busting i will do another video specifically on dealing with stress uh, but you know exercise is a great way natural way of stress busting and also shedding some calories and improving your joint health and uh, improving the strength of your bones also a lot of our joints they're in synovial synovial sockets which in, you know that this, we have the synovial fluid which actually um, oils our joints keeps us moving nicely and if those if you're not getting regular exercise for your joints that's it that synovial fluid can diminish so you know regular exercise is also going to improve your joint health overall as well and then finally i think this is probably the most important one is to give yourself grace just take it easy going through the menopause is such a big transition in so many women's lives whether you become a menopause warrior or whether you're really really struggling with symptoms still it's still a transition it's still a period of your life where things are going to be slightly different you know you may be becoming an empty nester that's happened to me so you're getting used to not having your babes around anymore I know some women are going yay celebrate they're out of the house not me I adore her I love being a mum and I love having my children at home so um for me it was really important to have something that would fill my days fully and in a purposeful way so when the kids left home it wasn't quite so awful but I still cried buckets it was tough 
And, you know, sometimes it can change the dynamics in our relationships because your body is changing as well. Ah, bonjour, Frédéric, comment ça va? Um, you know, it might be that you're dealing with other, other, other menopause-related issues that are just making you lose your confidence. So to give yourself grace, I think, is incredibly important. And to allow yourself a bit of extra space around the day to just navigate this period of our lives. I think we're, we're all so good at just doing all the time. And we forget, you know, it's almost like the new buzzword is, oh, yeah, I'm busy. I'm busy. I, I, I catch myself saying all the time, I'm going to nip, nip for a quick wee or nip for a quick this or nip for a quick that. Just like, why does it have to be quick? It's just, just do it. <laughs> but we all become so obsessed with being quick and fast and busy. And actually, there's a lot to be said for just actually making a few micro moments through your day. You can still have a micro moment on the toilet just instead of frazzling about everything you've still got to do just take a few deep breaths and try and clear your mind for a few moments it does work it's incredibly beneficial if you have time to add in a few minutes of meditation in the morning or the evening again i suggest highly suggest you do that i will be going into more stress busting techniques as we go through this but i just wanted to sort of share my top tips with you so first of all watch what you're eating incorporate more vegetables into your diet reduce sugar and do not be afraid of healthy fats they are incredibly good for you exercise for your bone health your joint health your stress busting your feel good hormones your weight management and give yourself some grace so if you found this helpful please share it with a friend who might be navigating the menopause and is struggling a little bit i think you know, it's it's a totally nat i think it's a complete it is a natural part of a woman's life I think if we take steps to manage it naturally, most of us can get through it without having to go down the chemical or the sort of replacement hormone route. Of course, that's up to everybody to make their own mind up. Um, and if you want that 14 day free trial, go to my link tree link in my Instagram bio and um, you'll have the choice there and you can sign up for the 14 day free trial. No catches at all. Go and enjoy the workouts, enjoy the nutrition plans. I will get you into my online boot camp for a couple of weeks and you have the support in there as well if you want it. So hope that was helpful and have a great rest of your Saturday. Thank you for your time and I'll catch you again soon.